In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a dynamic bar chart that updates depending on whatever we've selected in a data validation dropdown list. But I'm also going to show you how you can create a dynamic chart title that also changes depending on your selection. So if that sounds like something that you want to learn and trust me on this one, you do because it is so cool, then please keep watching. So on the worksheet here, I have a small table of data. And of course, your table of data might be a lot larger than mine, but the premise is exactly the same. I have a list of students and I have the pass mark that they've scored out of 100 for three different exams. So maths, science and English. And what I want to be able to do here is I want to be able to select a student from a drop down list in cell B13 and have that student's data picked out of the table and plotted in a bar chart underneath. Now there's quite a few steps to this process, but it is actually fairly simple when you break it down. So we're gonna do it in stages. Now the other thing that we want to ensure is that everything is dynamic. We love things being dynamic in Excel because it makes us more efficient. So what do I mean when I say dynamic? Well, basically, if more students are added to this table, I don't want to have to go in and start editing formulas and modifying my chart to get that information to update. I want everything to be done automatically for me. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to put this little data set into an Excel table, control T. Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. And from the table design ribbon, I'm going to give my table a name and we're just going to call this students and hit enter. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because tables have an auto expand capability. So it basically means that if I add new names to the bottom, the table is going to automatically expand to accommodate those names. And if I've built things like charts based off of this table data, it means it's automatically going to include that in the chart, which is super awesome. So the next part of this process is just to create ourselves a data validation dropdown list so that we can easily select our students. So let's click in cell B13. We're going to jump up to the data tab and then all the way over in the data tools group, we're going to select data validation. Now we want to create a list and the source for our list are our student names, B5 to B10. Click on OK. So now I have this little drop down arrow and I can just select different students from this list really easily. And it just means I don't have to type them in each time. So we've got our table. We've got our drop down list. The next thing to do is to insert our bar chart. I'm going to click in my table, jump up to insert. And in the charts group, you could choose any chart you like. I'm going to go with a 2D bar chart. And we're just going to put that somewhere over here. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about the formatting at this stage, but I am going to change the chart style because I want to use this style just here. Now, check out what my chart is currently showing. It's showing me all of the information in my table. So I'm getting to see plotted in this chart all of the students and all of their results. Now, I don't actually want it to show this. What I want it to show is just the information for whichever student I select in this drop down. So this is where we need to use VLOOKUP to construct a little formula that's going to pick the relevant information from the table so that we can plot it in the chart. And to make my VLOOKUP formula a little bit easier, I'm going to number my columns at the top here. So I'm going to type in one, two, three and four. So let's construct our VLOOKUP, our lookup value. Well, our lookup value is whatever student we've selected in cell B3. And I'm going to press F4 to lock this. Comma, table array. Where are we looking up this information? Well, I'm looking it up in this table, so I'm just going to select the entire table. Now, remember, when you formatted your data as a table, you don't need to worry about messing around with locking references or anything like that. The table effectively locks your references, so we don't need to do anything here. Comma, column index number. So this is the column of information that we want to return. So for this particular one, I want to return the maths result for Chad Pitt. So that is going to be column number two. Now, because I numbered these columns, I'm just going to select the cell that contains the number two. And the reason why I add these numbers is because it makes it just so much easier when you drag this formula across. Are we doing an exact or an approximate match? 
Well, I want to exactly match the name Chad Pitt in the table. So we're going to do an exact match. So we need a false on the end here. Or remember, you can just type a zero. Let's hit enter and we're going to drag this formula along. And we should find that that is now picking the correct information from the table. So if we just do a quick check, Chad Pitt, yes, that all looks good. If I change the drop down, let's go for Julio Roberts, you can see that yes, it's picking up the correct information. So this is exactly what I want. And it's this information that I want to plot over in my bar chart. So the next stage of the process is just to modify the cell range that this chart is referencing. So if we click on the chart, you can see highlighted the cells that are being used in our bar chart. You can see we have a red border around the titles. So our legend is using those titles. And then we have a purple border around the names. And you can see those names in that vertical axis. And then we have a blue border around the data. So those are the three pieces of information from our table that this bar chart is using. Now, what do I want this bar chart to use? Well, I want it to use the student name in cell B13 and all of these values, but I also want it to use the math, science and English headings. If I don't use those, then my legend isn't going to make any sense. So the easiest way to do this is if we grab this little blue square in the corner and just drag down, and we're going to do the same for the top one. We're going to drag it down so that we're now selecting the data that we want to use in the chart. And you can see the chart has already updated. We now just have Julio Roberts in that vertical axis and the values. And because we still have math, science and English selected, those are showing correctly in the legend. So this is exactly the data that I want it to use. So now I have my data correct, I'm just going to do a little bit of chart formatting. And this is optional, you don't have to do all the steps that I'm doing here, but I just want to show you how I would go about formatting this chart. Now in a moment, we're going to add a chart title, which is going to list the student name in the chart title. So I don't really need Julio Roberts in the vertical axis. So I'm going to remove that to make it look a lot cleaner. I'm now going to format these bars. So Let's click on one, press control one to open format data point. Now I'm going to move these bars a bit further apart. So let's decrease the series overlap. And I'm going to take the gap width down as well to make them a little bit wider. And you might just have to jiggle around with these until they look exactly as you want them to look. I think that's pretty nice. Let's right click and we're going to add some data labels. I'm going to do the same for all of these. Unfortunately, we can't do these all in one go. We have to do them separately. And I think I'm going to put these on the inside end of the bar. So let's click on the first one, go over to the format data labels pane and our label options. And I'm going to change my label position to inside end. I'm going to do the same for all of these. So let's just make them all show on the inside end of that bar. Now let's do a little bit of font formatting. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger so that they really stand out. I'm going to make them bold and white. Now I want to apply that formatting to the other data labels that I have as well. So the quickest way to do that would be to double click on the format painter and simply copy that formatting across. Escape to deactivate your format painter. So that's all the formatting I'm going to do. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. The final thing to do here is to create a dynamic chart title. Because what I want this chart title to say is pass mark four I then want a dash and then the person's name. So to do this, we can just click somewhere else in our worksheet and we're going to type out a little formula. Now we're going to put the first part of this in quote marks because it's text. So I wanted to say pass mark four. I then want to join it. So we're going to use the ampersand symbol with a space dash space and then join it with whatever student has been selected in cell B13. So when I hit enter, that is what my chart title is going to look like. Pass mark four, then we have a dash, then we have the selected student. And when this changes, so if I change it to Emma Scone, you can see that that updates. So all we need to do now is link the chart title to our formula. So let's click on the chart title. We want to go up to the formula bar and type equals and then simply select the cell that contains our text. Hit enter and check it out.
And what you'll find is that when you change the selection, not only do the values in the bar chart update, but also that title updates as well. How cool is that? And as I mentioned, because of the way that we've built this, when we add someone new to our table, everything's going to update. So let's go in and add Steve Coral, and we'll just add some values for him. So now we have a new entry in the table. If I go back to select student, you can see it's automatically added him in the bottom there. I haven't had to do anything else. If I select Steve Coral, my chart and my chart title update. So everything we've built here is completely dynamic and it just really makes us a lot more efficient. Now, a couple of final things you might want to do here. You don't have to do these again, but if you want to tidy up this spreadsheet, you could effectively move this text onto a different worksheet. You could make the text white just to disguise it. I'll leave it up to you what you do with those. But again, with these values, maybe we don't want those to show. I could just make those white. And the same with these numbers at the top here. I can just make the font white so that we have something that looks a lot cleaner. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give me a like, maybe leave me a little comment, and you also might want to consider subscribing. That's all for now. I shall see you next time.